Chapter Twelve of Mary, a fiction by Mary Wollstonecraft. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by April Gonzalez. Chapter Twelve. The physician was set for his prescription afforded and little temporary relief, and they again joined the circle. Unfortunately, the weather happened to be constantly wet for more than a week, and confined them to the house and then found the ladies not so agreeable when they sat whole hours together. The Fred bad topics were exhausted, and, of her cards and music, the long evenings would have been yawned away in listless indolence. The bad weather had had as ill an effect on Henry as on Nan. He was frequently very thoughtful. This melancholy would of itself have attracted Mary's notice, if she had not found his conversation so infinitely superior to the rest of the group. When she conversed with him, all the faculties of her soul unfolded themselves, genius animated expressive countenance, and the most graceful and affected gestures gave energy to her discourse. They frequently discussed very important subjects, while the rest were singing or playing cards, nor were they observed for doing so, as Henry, whom they all were pleased with, in the way of gallantry showed them all more attention than her. Besides, as there was nothing alluring in her dress or manner, they never dreamt of her being preferred to them. Henry was a man of learning. He had also studied mankind, and knew many of the intricacies of the human heart, from having felt the infirmities of his own. His chase was just, as it had a standard, nature, which he observed with a critical eye. Mary could not help thinking that in his company her mind expanded, and he always went below the surface. She increased her stock of ideas, and her taste was improved. He was also a pious man. His rational religious sentiments received warmth from his sensibility, and, except on very particular occasions, kept it in proper bounds. These sentiments had likewise formed his temper. He was gentle and easily to be entreated, the ridiculous ceremonies they were every day witness to, led them into what are termed grave subjects, and made them explain his opinions, which, at times, he was neither ashamed of, nor necessarily brought forward to notice. End of chapter 12 Let them 